This is the building where Charles Manson is waiting sentence. After 194 days of testimony and 43 hours of jury deliberation, the longest and most bizarre case in California history was brought to a first phase close when the jury of 12 delivered verdicts of guilty on 27 counts of first degree murder against Charles Manson and three members of his family. Of Manson's original family, only three are left in Los Angeles. The rest have disappeared, moved to the deserts, gone to jail, and some stand vigil waiting for Charlie. You know, I'm just walking around out here, but I'm in there. I'm in there with all those people. I'm in there with every young person that should be free. And I'm in the Hall of Justice with Charlie. And I'm in death row with Bobby because uh, you might see different bodies, but we're all one, one mind, one spirit. And uh, wherever we are, none of us will be free until every single one of us is out, you know? And I might as well just be in jail. If I thought I could do better in jail, I'd just walk right in right now. There's a time for living. On January 25th, 1971, Charles Manson, Susan Atkins, Patricia Krenwinkle, Charles Tex Watson and Leslie Van Houten were granted the death penalty. You are next, all of you. There are many, listen, listen to me, there are many more men who are experiencing the same injustice. There's a revolution coming very soon. What would you do next now? What are you going to do right now? Can you feel? Ah, those feelings real. Look at your game, girl. Oh, look at your game, girl. We jump ahead now, a year later. I'm driving my car, 1972. The car radio's on, and I hear that the U.S. Supreme Court had set aside the death penalty, made all of their rulings retroactive. Manson and I used to have several conversations. He says, you know, Bilyos, he says, you haven't achieved anything. He says, all you've done is send me back to where I came from. children coming up in the gray coming up from the grave we took the liberty of uh, bringing a little box here along so that you could hear uh, uh, let me please let me explain to you Lino Bagnaca was killed for a black phone book with all the numbers in it the phone numbers that controlled the music market Sharon Tate and those people were killed because Terry Milcher broke a contract and sent three Orientals with hatchets over to kill somebody else. In other words, you raise men up in the music, and everybody wants to say, hey, well, mine is better than his, and what are you doing up on my stage? And who controls what on this set when you see Sharon Tate's body laying there all naked and murdered dead? Do you think I had something to do with that? That was the altar. It had nothing to do with me. Oh, wait, Charlie, I can't let you get away with that shit. Terry Milcher was supposed to do some things with music he didn't do. So? Terry Milcher lived in that house. So? Nobody knew Sharon Tate lived in that house. So killing Terry Milcher was no, okay? No, 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 no. He, he broke his word, man. So when you, you went looking for him? I didn't go looking for anyone. No, for see, there again, you don't understand it. Let me race, lace it up your head again, man. Because when I fell out of this penitentiary and I was playing my music, you, Neil Diamond, Buffalo Springfield, I'm Beach Boys, 
all of them guys came to me, you dig? And you said, how can you play this kind of music, man? We've never heard this kind of music before. You know, he said, wow, this is strange kind of music, you know? And I said, oh, and they copied and stole from me and took it down and put it in whatever they did, you dig? We were in and out of the best music studios, regardless of if the uh, producers and uh, people would like to cop to it now. Uh, we were in, in some of the studios that musicians would give their left arm to be in. And uh, Manson was perceived to be, and the group was perceived to be quite talented by a number of industry people here in Los Angeles. There was nothing to indicate that things were really seriously deteriorating right up until the murders happened. He was always interested in music. That's the sole interest of Charlie Manson. He sat on the rocks and played guitar. He'd get up and walk around. He'd get a piece of pencil and paper and go and write some music. And everywhere he went, some of the girls kind of followed him and laughed and talked and sang. You painted a very poetic picture of this community. How do you relate this to one of America's most bizarre murders? The only thing I can say to that is that after their music fell through, they became more morbid and started thinking of other lines. Were they taking drugs, do you know? Uh, we never could prove it, but off and on we heard they were. The only thing that could have cracked their mind. The myth runs that, that Terry had promised this contract to Charlie and that um, he had not come through with it. Charles got it in his mind that uh, everybody was letting him down. He had been lied to, his words, and uh, being the uh, psychotic that he is, he conceived uh, this idea of revenge. And the story went that when that happened, he then went looking for Melcher, and that was when he discovered the Tate people in there and murdered them instead of Melcher. Dennis lived in fear of Manson and the family for years afterwards. This sobering reality check hit him hard. At that, he started taking an active role in the studio to regain credibility. All of a sudden, he started to shine. He sort of came into his own. You know, he could produce, he could write, produce, and arrange a little bit, and sing. In August 1977, Dennis was the first Beach Boy to produce a solo album entitled Pacific Ocean Blue. Upon its release, the album was a surprising success. Dennis became passionate about recording and dedicated his time to writing music after being inspired by his brother Brian and the plethora of madness that had recently entered his life. Vibrations are happening with her. Gotta keep those love you. Vibrations are happening. 